This is, it takes two people to handle. I think they're heavy, right? They put people in the They're fairly light. Oh, they're the bulky. Sun, the sun laborers put one on by himself. Okay. I just want to mention that. We'll see, we'll see all that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so again, um, domestic waters, um, hand towels, um, I, I oversight, but again, it's, it's in the corridor. And, Level, level two. So again, source of flow coming up and taking this side. The shutoff valves for all the, the hose tubes, the wall items on the exterior of the building are also in the first proximity right there in the first floor. In those same areas of those valves, there'll be a separate pack for those, which is on our plans. There's no valves inside any of the classrooms. So they're all ripped in the hallway right where you're going to go there. Some areas have seven feet piles right within a 10 foot area. So they were going to have to work. They didn't have to show the label. Yeah, yeah. It goes. Level three, there's, there's no domestic uh, water going to go to the south because the building would go that high. You have an air handler, you have two that sits over here. Um, yeah, there's, there's a commentary drain, obviously, that comes off of it. But um, as far as the mess of the as far as just the gold, as the top, it you know, just serves the north side. And, and it just um, it serves right up to your Chris. And then the lab itself, the bathroom, does that go? The, 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 the bathroom itself has separate risers and they come up. Yeah, up a level two, right? They come up in like um, their closet, they come up in? Or do they come up? Uh, I think they come up all the I think they come up like where the vending machine. Actually, that stuff is sealed off. Uh, the valves are in the ceiling, and they're all on the drums. So these ceilings are on a high eight foot. Those are taller. No, they're, they're taller. They're, they're just the, they're just the regular cheap ones. You need eight foot ladder. Right. Eight foot ladder. Most of our piping is within a foot. Okay. A foot or so. The main issues with our with our whole domestic is where to shut it off. Right. And there's some strategic items here, and you'd like to get this drawing and mark it up. We'll look at it again. Those type of things for John and, and Ron. Um, yeah. Oh, Ryan. Ryan. I'm sorry. Ryan. Sorry. Good work. Thank you, Double. Um, yeah, so that, 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 that's a, from a domestic is, is being able to, to, to get to the leak without shutting down the building. Yeah. Like some of our. Oh, we're older buildings. I mean, it's a block away with a cut off there. Some poor buildings go down, right? Two buildings. We come across level one, then we come up up the shaft right from here, I think it is, right? Yes. Uh, that picks up uh, so, hot and cold domestic water. So right. this area would be kind of the unique area of the bathroom, but on the, on the east side, as far as how the water ultimately gets up to level two and three, because it's kind of, uh, it's obviously different than it starts, the court. It starts out like in the vending room, there is on level one, and level two, and then level three. The piping continues up, it's just there's nothing. It's up there. Yeah. You shut it off right there. And you, uh, during the commissioning, you did your check. Um, I don't know your name, I'm sorry. Oh, sir. I'm Chris. Chris, Chris, Chris nice to meet you, Jose. Um, uh, Obviously, we did we did the checks to, to see if we have any crossover. Um, yes, we got the temperature arriving at the right temperature. Uh, so we had a little, not a little confusion, but there was there's, you have several temperatures coming, as you'll know in a second, coming from the hot water uh, the hot water side. We got 180 in that in the mechanical room, 125, 108, and, and 140. So we have four water temperatures going through, but I think 108 going to the bathroom. Yeah, 125 is supposed to be to the TMB2 valves, and then the, the hot water, the TMB1 valve, which is in the cap room, is supposed to be 140. Okay. So 125, you, 140 in general. Not sure, so you, you guys really won't work on the on any system besides the 108, right? Yeah, we Because the, air, the, the engineers will work on the, one, the 125. Okay. 
140. Well, it would be more like on the 140. I think that, I mean, as far as the, the, the actual <coughs> means of providing hot water, though, this basin is coming from the heating hot water plant, which is 180 degrees. It goes to the double heat changer as part of the okay. generator package, but, you know, there's a control which we'll show you where it's at that is on basically the heating hydraulic side. Um, but then it, it, again, it's a double heat changer, so on the secondary side of it is domestic water. Which right. Then, Heats up the tank. So it's kind of like we were working together, just, right. like, it's just like islands. Right. We were handling that. We were doing the other part. Sure, sure. Yeah. sure. We always check the we weather. We have additional temperature. Islands only has three temperatures, yeah. and we're around the 125 for the chill beams, right? Yeah, the chill beams is on the on, is on the hydraulic side, the air conditioning side. But the hot portion of the chill beam, that or is that the chill beam? The other. Um, it's going to be called the uh, the chilling well, one off of the all off the hydraulic system, the air conditioning system. This domestic just we <coughs> have domestic. Where are we having heat coming from? Or heat, the heating hot water on the chill the the window chill beams. The chill beams, as far as heating hot water comes off of, it comes off of. We have 180 degree water. It goes to a different hot water heat exchanger. There's okay. two separate hot water heat exchangers. One is okay. for hydraulic heating hot water. Because we have. It's probably about choking units. It actually is an air conditioning component. And on those choking units, we actually have a heat exchanger. It, it's uh, a means of allowing the temperature to be lower than 180 degrees. That goes for comfort cooling. And uh, so we take off the hydraulic underneath the water, hydraulic heating hot water. We make the water 180 to, the, to our choking units to provide heating on the perimeters on the choking units in the classroom for temperature control. Power that same 180 degree water, which comes from the central plant goes into a double wall heat exchanger, a specific type of you know, exchanger so that we don't have cross-contamination. And that particular heat exchanger, which is a separate exchanger, <coughs> provides the means of heating domestic up to 140 and storing in the hot water generator tank. And then out of that 140 degree, we have the first TMD valve, TMD1, that brings the temperature down to 125. And you'll see that. I just uh, again, I was a little confused. Yeah, right. so and it's still two separate. They separate and two separate. And like Ron said, I mean, the, the engineers when they work together, they usually you know uh, it's all the stuff like in the room library. It, 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 no, it's not a water. It's a condensate leak. Right. And, and, you know, oh, yeah. and then the next morning, oh no, it's not a condensate leak. We don't burn anything. It's <laughs> actually a water leak. You know? Yeah. So, um, that will never happen in this building. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll go back up there because you're missing that. That's kind um, that's of where we're at here. Um, That's what I'm doing. That's just me. That's how we find it. Okay, so, yeah, as you mentioned, Jose, as far as, yeah, domestic cold comes in. Okay. Um, these are those two small recirculating pumps that are on the wall. They're kind of tucked back and behind the hot water generator. This heat exchanger, this is showing the domestic side, okay. but the same hot water generator has an external ex heat exchanger that's adjacent to it. And that's the one that's seen 180 degree water from the hydraulic system, heating hot water. So the two aren't drawn together on this drawing. Mm -hmm. It just this is just on the domestic side of it. So we open up a valve on the so that's heat water exchangers on the hydraulics so that we saw this morning. Yeah, there's two different the heating hot water heat exchangers. And mm -hmm. one of them supports this hot water generator. Okay. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll touch that and we'll be crystal clear, I promise you. Yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> till the first drop. That's why that Chris came up like, hey, I don't know where my access points are. I don't know my head go up here. So, hey, we have to support each other, right? So, yeah, good. So, this is um, 140 and 125. That's for the draw contract drawings. And then again, we send out 
excuse me, the 125 degree water to all the you know, all the fixtures and obviously cold water as well. So um, kind of cover the um, domestic water system overview, hot water generator. Um, the domestic water pump, the only domestic water pumps we have is we have the two circulating pumps. Um, and then we go into the lab, the lab waste system overview, which is kind of why I want to make sure uh, I'm just here. The, 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 the research, no, I was just looking back to the, re, the research pump. <laughs> yeah. That's research on domestic hot water. That's correct. Okay. Right so, that's right. so it just goes back in the tank and out of the tank. Depending on demand, um, it goes because there's no booster pump. But sometimes in buildings, you catch, yeah, you got a domestic booster pump, but we got plenty of domestic pressure. Right? Yeah, right. Primarily, the the domestic water return pumps is so that we have the, the, the hot domestic water at the extremities of the system, the domestic water system. So throughout those extremities of the system, we actually have small balancing valves, or melting gossets, et cetera. And we set those based on the design requirements of the engineer, like half a gallon a minute, three quarters a gallon. Look at low flow, you'll see some of the, the, the not, not the wash areas, but you know, where they're gonna do the glass cleaning and all that, and they have hot water, basically really look like kitchen sinks is what's set up there. And then on the opposite side, well, one, some of them are on this other right side, of them, right? Do we have one on the other side? Or just on this, on the west side? Or the, Generator itself? No, for a clean, uh, the, the for the uh, lab clean, they're cleaning the glassware, mm -hmm. they're storing. Uh, yes. So that that's where um, they want to make sure they get hot water there for for that. And mm -hmm. that keeps the temperature correct. also correct throughout the loop. So this these pump only one runs at a time. They they're gonna oscillate. There's alarming on them. If one fails, the other one turns on. If they being run through the building automation system. Mm -hmm. As well as the height as a alarm point, as you mentioned, which as far as coming out of the, mm -hmm. the panel to see if there's an alarm. So, Jose, in regards to the domestic water, I mean, it's hard, it's, it's, it's not so hard to see, but the symbol here is a balancing valve, and it's on the domestic hot water return, which takes here. So, we have multiple balancing valves on multiple levels, and that being said, I were to go back to the floor plan we're in for this one There's our pump. There's our ground boss pump. We have two of those. That's our domestic hot water return pump. And then uh, We have all these balancing valves that are throughout the building. And then floor plan. Um, yeah, I would have. So obviously our domestic hot water return pump is in the mechanical room. And the same symbol we've seen or the balancing valves. So we have the balancing valve here. They're all located. Balancing valve there. Put the shut off valve is pretty primary. Balancing valve here. So what we're doing is they didn't the engineer didn't specifically tell us what flow they want. We had an RFI and we got a response back. So we balanced the valves based on the requirement that got the element. So as you can see, the water's gonna come. It's we're always gonna have return water coming back going back to the return of the hot water system. So we're constantly researching the water even though the valve pumps are off. Yeah. Okay, fine. And that's the last valve so we have one on level three. And the attic space on level three. So it's basically all the extremities we have a balancing valve. So we can continuously circulate water throughout the domestic system so that someone does turn on then you have some like 15 seconds between the water for it to be down and down. Where, and then I know this part of the public building and operation and you know, that. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I know you kept you off. You had a question. I wanted to get back to the pump. But you got some low flow aerators on there right now, like real, real low flow? What are you guys running on the faucets? So being the bathroom, running in the bathrooms? Yeah, no, no, no. It's only in the central bathroom in the bathrooms. 
you'll see the lab seeing some of them are in their low flows. Yeah, the 15 GPMs coming out. Uh, yeah, or we're going to change that though. Uh, so probably. Well, yeah, we'll make that. That, that, that's a little bit everything. We'll make that out. All the classes in the back end, so we're coming to that. Right. So I was just asking about the critical waste. Uh, it's right out there with the access right out there and the entrance. Is it a lot by the device hole? Is there a big tip? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because yeah. we have one over here at the Aliso, and it has a monitoring area. Yeah, there's a monitoring system. There's a panel inside the right across from the vending machine. Right. Ooh. Uh, on level one. Yeah. And there's the, they have the sensor in the sampling and basin right outside the main hole. Yeah. So okay. Man, we, you'll see. Uh, yeah, we have to clean the probe once every six months. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was just Ooh. wondering. Yeah. Is that been heavy? Yeah. 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 Now we got some lid, man. I Thanks. pulled that lid off 12, 14, 15 times. Yeah. So, Chris, can you, as far as laboratory lab, lab waste, can you kind of generalize like, how that's all installed? That's something I don't know where well. it obviously goes to. Well, everything, for some reason, all of the, the lamps and all the process waste goes to an interceptor mm -hmm. on the north side, and there's no interceptors on the south side. For some reason, it's just basically plumbing traps and all that other stuff. So everything on this side has the J.R. Smith interceptors, you know, with the, the screen inside. Um, that's the way they designed it. Screens up. I guess, you know, they, they know what those class games are. Okay. You know, they know that they're going to be on that side. That's, that's the way they designed it. Simon to ask the question. <laughs> Why are they all on this side? <laughs> There's even one in like uh, like the kitchen area on level two over here where the ice machine is. There's one in there too. I don't know. There's a garden disposal that goes to a separate waste, separate waste line. Perhaps you know? yeah, it's just broken. Is that the uh, Or just standard? It's a really expensive one. I think it's like 400 bucks. No, it's not the big giant one. Yeah, it's it's it does farm. Well. No, it's, it's a fancy home version. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have two garbage disposals? There's two garbage disposals in all of those. And they're both in, I guess, like kitchen or snack areas or whatever. And for clean outs? They're everywhere. Second floor, too? Or just first floor? Uh, the second floor is announced on the urinals. Oh, yeah. And everything above the first floor is only announced on the urinals. Except for a few areas over on the waste and vent system where the plan showed the clean house in the right. second, third floor. So there, there's clean up there. We'll walk those um, okay. path this, we'll walk the location that looks like. Just kind of yeah, there's going to be just so we can identify where the visualizing tank is. The, obviously, the monitoring panel, yeah. you know, where it's at as well. And then Where's the interceptor on there? Um, yeah, I guess the drawing there. Go. Oh, right. looking for a second. Well, it should be on that one or headed that way. The neutralization tank, the interceptors are the, the JR Smith things that are in the cabins. The closest cabinet, some of them are in the little small cabinets, the 15 cabinets, like in the labs. Mm -hmm. the, the top, you know, Do we have those in Elisa? No. no. I think we got them in the other one. I just want to take that. Well, we'll we will see them. I just want to get that familiar with these guys. Not too important. <laughs> so, if we could run air through the line, like get a little bit closer, if you go to electricity, I could even get closer too. But you guys talked to me about right crisscrossing waste and, and sewer and new tank with the pressure and the balancer and the reheat. And 
I just, it's, hey, it works fine. Every time I flush, it works perfectly. The only, <laughs> the only, there's only the bathroom to go through the waste, because that's the waste in the bank, the phone to the sewer, minus the, the grocery suppers, the, the pick up the condensates for the air handlers, those go into the waste in the bank, and then there's the two sinks over there, 2304, like on the, the west side over there. Those are waste and vent. Everything else is processed waste. Where's the content going? Uh, into the receptor, the receptor of the phone book, right outside the area. Oh, the, there is miscellaneous condensates from the units inside the electrical and data rooms. They go over, they're, they're all in for the plan and go over and tie in. They should be dumped in the plant. Uh, that's another month and a half. Why is there any condensates? Not in the concrete. It's all proper. Why not? Some of them got their own tracks. And then overflows, anyone come to the ceiling and drop it as anything or anything? Uh, we get on the support system, the Mitsubishi support systems. If we oh. actually have like, external condensate pumps on them, the Mitsubishi condensate pump well, or the manufacturers, they wreck them all. And uh, we, if there's an external flow switch we can use for overflow to turn the heater off. Oh. So, cool. But every single one of them has a pump on them, except for the elevator machine room unit, which is gravity drain. But all the rest of the split systems have pumps on them. Every single one. No water in this one. No. So, um, oh, where was it? You know how it was in the other living and breathing systems. It just, <laughs> it's just keep doing what they want to do, you know? And then there are more like storm, storm drains, and as you have storm drains, and there's actual, I'll say, but there's no one there, so. Oh, Rain gutter, rain, rain gutter. That was their vibe. So, so they, well, we provide the the So we did all the cash down and turn the ground. We did the slab or the exterior of the building and uh, the uh, That's all it's called. That's cut and run. pH control. We do the pH control. Do you guys get a call when pH goes out in the new tank? And when do we clean it out? How does that work? So, okay, so what I'm going to be, when we go see the tank and stuff, I want to see what's on there. I mean, because if, if it's just going to BMS, like they can get a notification there, the alarm, then we don't have to do any visual checks, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little, you, know, you guys know. And all those kind of questions as to you know, like, uh, uh, these folks are talking, it, I call sequence of operation. How do, how do things operate? So, um, you know, you arrive on scene and you know how domestic water, you know, people say, I'm not getting water, I'm getting any pressure and stuff. So, where do you start with the strainer, with the pump, with this? So, knowing the sequence of operation of each of these systems and being able to kind of articulate it back or have the customer tell you what is not working, then it's easier to figure out how to troubleshoot and or maintain and or keep compliance if it's one of these uh, sanitary neutralization systems that always get us a little bit messed up. Yeah, um, I'll have to talk to Joel. He is a neutralizing tank in this package, so we'll have to have a
there's caps well, on No, we have gas, the gas line tripped over this morning. Yeah, that's, there's a, when the gas line comes up by the utility yard, or basically by the pier of stations. So basically, uh, there, there, is gas, a gas there was a gas line regulator and a, and a earthquake valve, but then kind of when it comes, what's he's concerned with, when the line comes out, it comes out to the exterior gate, which we came up inside the other end the concrete there. There's an on off valve so there with the isolation valve. That's anybody who uses an isolation valve. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everything is gas off, there's nothing actually connected to it. From the inside of the building. So, okay, so really there's no gas in the building, no natural gas in the building. And it is to that top right there, that's why outside the gate right there. Um, that's for plan. I mean, I didn't design it. So that goes inside and it goes in like um, to several other valves and then runs through the building. And each floor on the west side, it just starts out with the cap right there. There's five massive gas valve panels, access doors that say massive gas valve shut off right on there. On each floor. On each floor, right. Um, no, when you walk into the classroom. The natural gas is not being used. We saw in the news morning when we were talking that they have con configurable tables in each of the classrooms. So you can take the table to make a circle or a T and all this. And I thought that they could punch in somewhere on the floor to get natural gas. But it's all sounding strange <laughs> this morning. So it would be something that. Uh, I'd like to know how far natural gas is in the building. It stubs out right at the shafts where all the water and everything comes up. It stubs out right there, just like that. The end of the hallway. Area. Yeah, the end of the hallway on the left sure. side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything comes out and just the cap right there. So the, that yeah. kind of answers your, your good question. You're still going to have a meter. Because at one point in time, you guys are going to have Oh, meter. sure, sure. Because if you got one in the greenhouse, Right. And this is a big building where, you know, these guys are going to be burning it 24-7, just like they got uh, MODOC. You got even students working 24-7 there. Doing their so we, we'll work the meter once we figure out how and if they're going to use natural gas in the building. Right now they're not using it at all. But, uh, but you'll, see, you'll see the valve that's sticking in the yeah, walkway there. It really needs to be secure, and we need to figure out that over. It's just weird that it's in the walkway, mm -hmm. where everyone could turn it on and off. That was we could drive the IOR, the valve right there, to make sure it's all it's coming this way. That was meant to by the IOR months ago. I I only installed it for the plans. I understand. You don't need to lie to that point. You don't need to lie to that point. Are you talking about the, the one right here? The one right there that we saw this morning? Yeah. But you answered the question. We have no meter right now, and we're really not using natural gas, but it is into the building. I mean, it's, it's the, a fire check and all that type of stuff. I mean, it'd be better, like, like Richard has said, it's pull it back to the, to the valve outside the building and shut it off there and uh, light it off until we need it. I mean, yeah. So I'll work that with with uh, with Dan Gerard and, and the fire marshal make sure we're working on it. There's also other raises that have been installed that are not, I don't want to say complete, but which was vacuum and air. Yeah. Um, so there's within the panel some nice to hold. We just said before, it's just it's all there. It's just there's no vacuum in it. There's no oh, air compressor. So drains. Well, we don't need that for two words. Roof drains. It wasn't on your list. Yeah, roof drains is um. Not that they ever get cold. Yeah, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <Richard. laughs> Yeah, I got five bucks. <laughs> five bucks, huh? There's no bottle higher than the average building. Oh, you got a train shot straight down? Uh, over, over, yeah, over. With, with 25 90s attached to them. Yeah, it see, that's what I'm saying. Seagulls, uh, what can I, I've seen. Who's going to get back to that drawing? Yeah, we have well, they have the basket springers on top. So oh. And we have oh, that, you know. Usually, when it rains up here, that's the only access test we got. You know, it's plugged up, okay. But the roof is tucked in. 
I mean, they're basically inside all the you know, mechanical areas. You know, it's not like, I mean, you, know, you got the whole roof. You know, if, it, if it's going to fly at that high, the chance of going to fly right over. <laughs> <laughs> to the other side and come down. You know. All right. Sorry, I asked. <laughs> The whole floor drains, are they still done? They're all, all, stuff all stuff around the whole? Yeah. Okay. 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 So we can get them to look a little high, but that's due to structural constraints. Yeah. I mean, ideally, we'd like to have it up to the ground, but we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. 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 Let's go talk and touch everything you just heard about. And if it's if it's the same old and you know already, you know there's no reason to linger there and look at it and talk to it. We just so work with the pace that you guys need. Craig, take us through each item again as we go down the list and look at it. Um, I'm going to look at you know how, how are we going to respond to a customer need. Um, is the kind of thing I always want to just do it exactly. Yeah, like access panels, the keys, or the screwdrivers. Exactly. So yeah, let's, let's go look and, and, and see things. what a typical bathroom looks like, um, where uh, these valves are at the end of the west. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the front access panels are all the same, but the ones in the... I mean, realistically, I mean, if you're a day station valve and open the drain and the light strainer, uh, oh, you can do these right there? Yeah, you can do those as well, right? Because there's, there's no checks in those. So, I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, fourth floor, yeah. I just don't, can't get in that ceiling and stuff. I just got to bring it down to this, you know, down to this level here. So, yes. um, it'll just take a second to do it that way. Shut off here, pop, 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 drain, wait 10 minutes, and you're ready to go. Should be. Right. Okay. Okay. So the gas that so we have gas till here. Yeah. And all the way into the building now. The question is is why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's it is, but you've got to play the main out there. Come this way. Where are they trying to get you? Yeah. What pressure are we coming in on? Remember, Craig, what? I know it's definitely the highest one, 78 pounds. 78 coming in? Yeah. That's part? Yeah, it's part. And the, the bleed outs on, on the outside? Uh, I'm going to ask the question. Hey, Chris, where's the people getting the keys to the rooms and this one's rooms? Do you have them? Oh. Um, as far as the question is, I guess, on uh, oh, you're fired. Or the right, or the riser drains. Uh, oh, I, well, uh, is that what you're asking, Richard? That's yep. not, yep. that's just the like R. That's sprinklers, yeah, sprinklers. Um, they have that part to do just do uh, the fire mains and the fire sprinklers, so I assume they're training the studio to do some as well. So we've got, I know that. All we need is to provide the drains. Yeah. Did they have the drains in the morning and the staircase? Okay. So we're coming to the mechanical room anyway, so those are good. Right. I didn't quite. Exactly. Right. So. Right in front of us here is the domestic hot water generator. This is the one that's set for 140 degrees. This is your baby, Richard, before you leave. It's your baby, Richard. So we have a research pump, um, internally the tank, three speeds. This is the control panel. Um, basically, it's very simple as far as the menu is the set point. Um, there's a high limit. So basically, you go through for setting the value. So if you push set point, you push that it tells you the value, 140. And you can go up and down if you want to. And you enter out. So then you, the next thing is the high limit, except for 150. So there is a solar valve on top. So if it gets too warm, uh, then eventually discharges the water to the drain. Okay. Okay. 
um, get back out of it and get the Canadian coat. The differential is a high limit to 160. So first of all, is the alarm at 150? At 160, it discharges. Okay. Again, you, this all this water is going to 13 mv one which is for 125. So if it gets too warm, it's just stop it anyways, right? The provision is for not allowing the 140 bar to be off. Now, this is where the cross tank comes in between heating hot water and domestic water. So here, this is actually hot water coming from the central plant that provides heating hot water. It's a heating comfort to like an air handler coil. So we're taking the hydraulic heating hot water and going into a, this here's a, a three-ray valve. We have that bypass closed uh, or partially closed. Basically, it's just waiting for the demand requirement from the generator to see 140 water. When the tank temperature starts to drop, then this valve, which you shouldn't have to make any adjustments or controls, it's got a proportional integral derivative loop which controls set point. So it opens a valve. You have two, two parts of the double heat exchanger. You have a primary side and secondary side. They're made so they don't have cross-contamination. So on this side, you have inhibitors and things to keep the pipe from corroding. But on the domestic water side, which is this side, is it's a separate circuit, right? And again, the valve has to open, consequently then internally allowing the domestic water temperature to go to 140. So this controller opens and closes the valve. There is a manual button on here. You can actually do it manually, but Again, if you set it manually, it's going to continue to rise just to maintain it, and then once you pull it out and pop it out, it goes back to automatic. This but it's something you shouldn't have to touch. We're concerned the loop temperature is set 140. That's correct. We don't have to worry about it, and then the engineers are really going to take care of the hydraulic side of it. The hydraulic side of it. Yeah. There's no treat on this side? No, it's all domestic. It's that something you get obviously drink. Okay. Yeah, that's actually truly domestic water. Okay. Take a shower with it, yeah. drink it. Smells like chlorine sometimes. Well, it did at one point in time, really strong. They chlorine the entire system. We got a chlorination inserts on all the domestic. So I say put an A out there for it and drain it down. Right behind here is actually those two pumps right there are your circulating pumps. The CRP one and two. Those are your two domestic hot water return pumps. Yeah. So um, inside the actual motor connection box. There's a way you can actually change the plug in there to make it go to different speeds. We're on the, we're on the correct speed um, for the hydronic balance. So everything is, is then balanced. Only one runs at a time. The just Inside the disconnects, um, to the right, there's actually a relay and a status. And all that's being uh, intercepted by the building automation system to turn either or on based on equal run time. And if one fails, it turns the opposite. And it sends it on. There's a, oh, we, we, we monitor motor current, so you can see the status of where the motor's running or not. Yep, mm -hmm. We put it on building automation because it was that much easier, plus you can watch it from the front end. So everything beyond this is basically uh, air conditioning control. All you guys have is really these two pumps, the research pumps, and this here. And then TMV, while like I said, all the water comes through it, and then it's set to go out. What you said what, what came up. I know that um, we're going to make a slight um, adjustment and we're going to pipe uh, the return line into here. Yeah, I don't know what's. So I know we're going to pipe this part here soon. Hey, like you said, water is coming. Still have to clean up the pipe. That, that was new to me. I got Craig's here. I wasn't there this morning. It just happened after Craig played a little bit. Right. He, he's mm -hmm. had 400 hours on that thing right there. He's bought new gauges. He's ran and got new old rings. Extra old rings and, and everything. Well, I think it was domestic water, which is not domestic water. I thought we put some Kool-Aid in there. Here you go. This will be good. <laughs> like you said, you've spent hours on this. Yeah, right there. Navigator. <laughs> there was a, uh, we brought the vendor in to work on the thermostat on that device. Right. They've got their valves every six inches, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
So you read the master and all of this stuff. He, uh, I, I know there's I guess it got it was really hot and it expanded and contracted and did all kinds of stuff. That's I know that we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna have to give them a wire brush. Yeah, wire brush. I know we're gonna come off this port. We're gonna pipe a line this port here. I have vision of Joel putting the engineer. But yeah, there's it's like my copper sink. It does. It's it's terrible. Good. I can't yeah. keep up with it. Wow. I'm almost giving up. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, we go into the automation panel and build right. the automation panel to monitor it for the alarm point. <laughs> Uh, there's not much inside this controller. Can we the fire and watch this? It's over here on this other panel inside here. Oh, you can go over here. I'm going to 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 go over here. I'm I have the keys I left in so my it, truck. I had just, just my, uh, my natural leaking power. Operators and and about oh, it it it's 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 I just happened to downsize it <laughs> just this weekend, so I'll be right back. I'll, uh, I'll join you. I'm going to go get my keys. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just have, I'll just want to help out. I'm going to say it's for the Yorkie. I'm going to say it's for the Yorkie. So, again, you guys might be called in to help. Oh, hey, I'm going to say it's for the Yorkie. Level. So these little pumps are the boogers. Yeah. I just put my my sun hat right there in my windshield, so if they do come, they see mm -hmm. the sun. <laughs> so even this has gravity drain on the other right. one doesn't stand time together and put pumps on both of them, so we don't have a problem. There's one in here as well. I used someone if it's a glue tape problem to come to plumbing is coming to the HVAC department. Uh, yeah, fingers at each other too oh, much. Whoever <laughs> bought the other person's There's water in the ground, they call so this is kind of the hallways, the access hallways. He's coming through here. I mean, there's all kinds of utility lines here because we have high temperature chill water, low temperature water, high temperature hot water, low temperature hot water, and domestic. I know, Ron, you were in one of the tours where everything yeah, was I remember. and, and yep. it was just yeah. like you got this packed. right here. What's... So that's, um, there is a balancing valve up there okay. uh, for domestic. Um, it's being, it's, it looks black, it looks green. So yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a balancing yeah. valve. Okay. Um, again, that's, there's going to be valves that feed the, this particular classroom. Okay, number right. Master gas valve. And then this is the riser. That's, that's correct. Here, that's correct. Catch everything. Correct. You need keys. He went to go grab the keys. That's where he. No. For, oh for yeah, that. for sure. Yeah. Most definitely. I think that should be a transmittal over the sun. And we can add to these. The only one we can't get into. Is so then all the utilities again, uh, right above us, go from uh, spread out from north to south on this end, on the west end, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's risers that are just behind the back of the. Inside each one of these classrooms, and it goes up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then it, then it goes lengthwise from west to east. Right down here? That's correct. Here you go. Craig, the, this valve is, is a balancing valve where the black is? Yeah, it's supposed to be. That's different than blue? Yeah, oh. yeah, blue is like for HBC. And right, like so this is what color is supposed to be here. It's supposed to be green. Oh, great. So I guess that's a dark green. Yeah. Okay, great. Everything's <laughs> enclosed. Okay, they're blacked up. Mm -hmm. Go report me. <laughs> In blue, it's blue. Blue is uh, HKC mechanical hydraulic. Yeah, there's a bunch of valves up the isolation valve. Well, that's not going to be there. Well, I wash them. Yeah, this bad boy. Yeah, I have. Uh, 
How do you work on those? Yeah, how, uh, work on how often should we do that? I don't know. He's like, I just got to read the book. Right. I'm not sure. Really. You got to read the book. Okay. So you just pop that top off? Yep. Yeah, it unscrews. There's a strainer inside there okay. to get the diamond rings and all that other stuff. Yep, there it is. There's a Oop, strainer there in there. There it is. And, uh, yeah, there's a basket. It's got a little handle in here. You got to strategically pull it up through through these little openings right here. Oh, I see. I was I was trying to explain. How, how often do we do this, guys? I. It depends on the usage and. Uh, yeah. You know, really, we will make up a TM where it'll start coming through and checking them there you go. as they come through and make sure everything. Or you'll check one and go, okay. Yeah, we better do them all, and then the. Once after a while they get used to it, they say, okay, we have to check them every three months. Or I want to supposedly this, this today. Or, what do you? Th what's this called? Or what? What's that interceptor? So Geo it's just Smith interceptor. But isn't there a main one for the building? Yes, that's there's, a, that's there's a big neutralization tank. I, I think they put okay. in these to keep the neutralization tank from being overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to I mean, see the the, yeah. the manual on this on the, the procedure. Yeah, I think we got to suit up. Yeah, what do we yeah got there was the there were, there's no set cleaning. I mean, it's a matter of use, you know. Yeah. yeah. You guys have these apparently throughout the project. I mean, throughout the campus. So. When that when that sink starts getting backed up and clogged, that means it's kind of clean. Yeah. Okay. And basically, that's what's going to happen. But. I took them at least. Right now they're new, but once it starts rolling, at least once a year. Mm -hmm. And then if everything looks good once a year, depending on the student load. Wow. A lot of the water is just being. Shit. Yeah. The floor clean outs are all over. Those are on our power plant. That's, those are primarily processed ways. And this is all going out that way? No, it, it's a spider web throughout the whole building. There's the future stuff. You know, so if you're going to here, here. It's got to go someplace. Okay. Where's the main main? The main mount down. The branch lines here, the main down there. I, I, I wanted to grab our set of plans. Yeah. You know, it'll show you everything. Right. 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 Uh, clean out there. That's yeah, where about the, I was here on the waste and vent lines at three inch line that goes up. Yeah, like sure. Only uh, a roof receptor for the condensate for the air handler. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the air handler unit up on the roof on this side of the building. That's that it. would be the drain right there. Okay. It's all on our plan. Okay. I mean, it's all for contract documents. All the, I mean, there's clean outs, you know, behind the cabinets. Yeah, we got two plugs Right here, uh, pull that out and stuff it back in. That's all it is. The whole water. Oh, and then you can fill the sink up. Yep. That's all we're pulling. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we'll lose those right away. Yeah. Somebody? They'll think it's trash. Uh, oh, someone's going to think they're trash. That's copper. copper. No, copper is worth money right now. Oh, I know. Oh, but again, we can yeah, see it. Yeah, it's faster. We need a place. What's wrong with you? Yeah, those are good. <laughs> yeah, with the, you got 20 places. <laughs> <laughs> I want to want a different color. Come on now. You don't know me, do you? No, those are all made for something else. <laughs> those are so last, the last, last item. Those are good. Oh, a hat rack. That's a clean up right there. Clean up. There's only like $6, $700 just for and, that one and, little piece And look at how big thing. they made them. They could have made them flush with the wall. <laughs> So the peach traps? The peach trap for the uh, fume hood. Are those clean outs there? Are those in the wall or are those? No, they're they're in the cabinet. Behind the cabinet. They're behind the cabinet. I got it. Those are the, the, the yeah, yeah. It's all mechanical. Here you go, man. You gotta pull apart the panel to get to it. Yeah. Is he dropping it? Yeah. Yeah, he dropped it. They all stuff out of the wall. Back there, right? So, so as soon as you come out of wall P trap, yeah, exactly. Oh, that one right there, that little panel right there, right behind that panel, there's the trap right there. Oh, okay, so okay, it's all the mechanical joint, nothing is fused, it's the mechanical joint fitting. So, you just unscrew it like a regular. Yeah, get a guy with a long arm. It has a 
It has like a bronze <laughs> barrel with an O-ring. I have, I have <laughs> really? <laughs> That stuff is bulletproof. I mean, each one of the little fittings is like 25 bucks a piece. You know, yeah, those exactly. things will last a million years. And all your shut up, uh, water shut up valves for this there's one, right there? There's one shut off valve in there. Okay. For, for the, the fume hood, it's a separate valve. It's like the only one that's inside. Of okay. There. There's seven of them total on this floor right, are in the building. All the fume hoods behind that door right there, there's a cold water shut off valve good. there. Good, good, good. Yeah, that's, that is vacuum pump. Yeah, the vacuum pump is that. That's a, that's a different contract. No, all the vacuum. Green dot here. Everything dot there. The green is uh, the plumbing, and the, the blue is uh, the air conditioning. See so, yeah, how valves are there? I was here to isolate the room. Future. I mean, that's that. I tried to keep them uniform, you know, for aesthetics. Right, right. But pretty, pretty, pretty much the valves are like right here. Circuit setting valve, hot and cold shut off valves are all pretty much right here. Nice. And these are like right here. And that's the, it's, it's all right pretty much uniform. Right. Things are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that one right there is obviously the shutoff valve for the drinking fountain. That one there is the shutoff valve for the bottle filler, although we do have shutoff valves down there. So there's one up there and there's also one down here. And the here. filter change us below? Yeah, it's inside. It's all open inside right there. Right? Uh, flathead screwdriver. On the side? Yeah. Okay. The little, you know, and yeah, then the is, are your settings? For these, the resets and all that, it's all down below too. Everything, it, the program, it all at least came, different than the ones we got. The one yep. I mean, it all came together. Right we have like 16 of them that stuff. are different than this. All right, because I know you got a program too. Yeah. Yeah. They, they came programmed. So, I mean, I have the paperwork. Okay, perfect. That's all. I have all the paperwork. Cool. Uh, that right there is obviously the valves for the, or no, no, the, that's probably the mops and valves. Like I said, all the valves are like in the corridor areas, right. so, uh, minus the bathrooms. The, the women's bathroom, there's no valves in there. Uh, oh yeah, check this out, they got boost decks. This is the women's bathroom here. We got we got all the air and all that yeah. stuff. So that would be your mixing valve. Yeah. No, these each one has its own mixing valve. Yeah. Oh, right there. Oh, oh, right there. Yeah. Oh, oh, right there. Yeah. Oh, oh, right there. 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 Clean out. Cool. Now that's clean out right there. What's that picking up? Is it picking up? Oh, it's a uh, nice one circuit. Wait, there's a, there's a, oh, that's a shower room on the other side. Oh, okay. How long before the kids yank the uh, plugs out of there for you guys? And you guys They've done that. Well, I need that. That's why I'm asking. I don't know. Do you guys want to put a bed on much longer before? Mm -hmm. Someone says, I need a they transfer. That over there. I need a transfer. Is that a five volt transformer to take home? This is a control right yeah, Because there. I gotta see! Uh, yeah. Okay. Anything yeah. should be said. Our scientist, Craig Gomez, is going to I'm not sure I have the right keys here. But anyway, it's a wall. Yeah. 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 Let me shut these things off. All right. From the same point, turn it off. Stop trying to. Turn it on. Um. 
you might have to get one of the professors over here to, you know, I've seen some of this stuff in one of his classrooms. But, um, what you have is you have um, to calibrate it, there's some, you can use a pH buffers that have a specific pH. And a calibrated one at Mission College is the same manufacturer. So you get different buffers of pH and the calibration is actually really, really easy. It's just that you have to go through the same steps and you have to order the, the, you know, the buffers to do so. So it basically for this, for this full range and how to alarm it. Um, pretty much tells you how to go through um, how to adjust it. Um, it talks about three cups and then temperature cold. It basically goes line by line um, how to toggle the switches and go into calibration. What uh, range material for Richard? Yeah. I'll wait for the video. <laughs> <laughs> So um, when you put your drain beats on, yeah, you can listen to the video. So there's a there's a obviously certification of calibration that came with the instrument. So that needs to go in case somebody wants to check it, you got it. And it's not right here. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Uh, and one time, I had a little bit of video, and I talked about how it's really this. Um, you have these pH buffers, you know, based on certain pHs, because so that way you can adjust them out, put the sensor in it. The oxygen sensor is in the tank, so that's not part is somewhat difficult. This was the wetting part of the sensor when we were here. Um, however, um, obviously the sensor's at the end. So I guess the easier way to do it, if you had two sensors, you could plug the sensor in here, and then, but then again, they're at, at the end of run. So that's where you should be putting the buffer in there in order to test it here, right? Mm -hmm. And it talks about the steps of how to calibrate it. So it's not too difficult. So basically, it says that you need it is one gallon of bottled water, three styrofoam cups, um, three, three pH buffer test solutions, a four, a seven, and a ten. So you need those three buffers. Mm -hmm. to do the test, and it tells you how to go about it, and then what buffers to use to do the calibration. So, you can buy those at home at that um, Granger's, those buffers. I bought them before. Okay. Yeah. Those are the fluorination tank right here. I'm ten foot, ten foot deep tank with, uh, I, I actually have pictures of it. There's the sampling basin right there. Is that big enough for you guys? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you uh, they're all it's fucking raining. I hope it will. Okay. A little drizzle right now. So how often do we need to get in? It's right here in that mantle. Oh, well, the signal goes all inside. So, there's a sampling basin at the bottom there, and the sensor's in there. I'll show you pictures right now. I'm gonna pull them up. We're gonna need a different type of. All right, so we got the new tank. Uh, I've made a note to check the neutralization guys and procedures and X, Y, Z on those. Um, anything on the sewers? No. Kind of look pretty good. There is no, uh, there is no sewer out here. No? The sewer's not over okay. here. Okay. So the bathroom. Let's double right check there. where the sewer is, there. and then I'd like to, I'd like to check the back there's, there's, uh, okay. there's, okay. there's, 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 yeah, there's, 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 They don't make they don't make a, a yard box with a so I mean apparently we'll have to weld over it or something. 
Yeah, you can just get the, the engineer. Right. 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 They wood chipped over it. I think uh, the wood chip is. There it is. Yeah. Perfect. Man, let's, let's disperse this stuff here. No, that's our. Oh uh, no, that's that's our ground keepers. They do that. Too. <laughs> we hunt back every now and then. Oh my gosh. <laughs> In the morning. I'm not kidding you, man. We're, so what do you do? So what do you call this? <laughs> this is actually uh, the waste and vent sewer clean out right here. All the bathrooms, everything, the shower. So sanitary sewer cleaning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Comes out right here. Goes that way. Yeah, we got to tell right. the guys not to. Yes, it comes, comes out, out this right way. here. Who wants to do that? To Put a site cement collar stuff. around it about that big. And then you got another one of these on the opposite side of the building. Let's catch the other bathroom. There is no bathrooms right. on the other side. All the bathrooms are right, right, here. right, right here. All the waste and vent is right here. Right. And they stack, they stack them just like the, the, all the way There's straight. three. There's three. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Just for the together right there. Plugs on all three of them. Yeah, we got the plugs, plugs, and plugs. Yeah. Take this off. Yeah, that was mine. I had that there for testing. Yeah. Wow. For, we water, understand. for water for the site guys and stuff. I don't know why it's still on there. <laughs> Apparently, I forgot to take it off. Yeah. 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 Got to put it on breakaway locks. Got it. Yeah. To college campus, but we need that. <laughs> All this was on the civil plan. I, I didn't have to do it. I think I have some pictures too. That was short. This is a spider web. The site contractors had the biggest, the big giant excavator out here just because they had this whole thing dug up like a stadium. A regular backhoe would have fallen into it. <coughs> Thank yeah, you. Remember, do you. You guys don't remember? I, I you saw, remember the I big giant open. track? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we had to shut the street valve. Both have a tie-in to get it all shut down. That's a dribble.